Hey guys, how you doing? Welcome to the video, welcome to my garage. In this video, I'm going to upgrade my electrical switch panel, and then when we're done with that, I think we'll take Ratchet on a little test drive up and down the street. So you guys may or may not remember, a couple videos back, I did a video where I did install this 8 switch switch panel, and I really like these because it cleans everything up. You've got this panel, and then you've basically just got a comm wire that runs around back to wherever you mount this little fuse panel. And it makes for a real clean setup. But the problem is that this panel in particularly, you can't program any of these switches. So these switches are, you press the button, and they turn on, you press the button and they turn off. And that's fine for my charging system and the light bar and my fan and power and lights, that's fine. But this button here is set up for cranking over the engine, which meant that I would have to press it, it would start cranking, and then when the engine caught, I would press it again to stop it, which is a terrible way to do it. And I knew that that was going to be a bad idea, and I didn't want this to be long term. Lo and behold, just a couple weeks after I installed this, Oxbeam came out with a like an upgraded switch panel. So this is the new switch panel. It's It's essentially the same panel. I guess they call it the RGB8 multifunction, and you can see the biggest difference is you can program the switches now to be toggle, which is what I have now, momentary, which is what I'm looking for, or pulsed, which is strobe. And so I'm going to install this, which is very similar. You can see the switch panel looks to be identical. It might be the same exact switch panel, I'm not sure. And then the biggest difference is I'm going to remove that fuse block that's behind my seat right now and I'm going to put this in its place which is essentially the same device but this is a little bit more solid state because there's some actual programming that you can do. So what I'm going to do for right now is I'm going to actually remove this one, replace it with the programmable one, run the comm wire, replace this fuse panel with that one that I just showed you and then I'm going to hook all the wires back up and then we'll test that out. I'm going to hold on to this because I think I'll eventually need more than just eight switches and if I do I'm going to remount this just right over here but I'm going to wait until I fill this up so I can be sure I need more than the eight switches and having this panel over here I'll just have that for things like the headlights, driving lights, maybe a strobe light, things like that that won't matter if it's not programmable.
Okay, so that should be it for the installation. You can see I've got the new panel in there, and I've got the new fuse block down there, and then you saw me run the wire around back up and up to here. Uh, this installation went pretty good. It's nice and clean at this point. There's no exposed wires or anything. One thing that I did a little different is I think they kind of expect you to run the wires from underneath up through here and then in. And since I brought all my wires from here, I had to notch out the panel for clearance there. Um, but that's no big deal. So let me put that back on there. Uh, but let me, uh, let me hop in there and then I'll pull up the app on my phone and show you guys how it works. All right, here we are. We've got the controller powered up here and I've got the app pulled up on my phone and it's Bluetooth connected to the controller. Really simple to set this stuff up. And let me show you some of the stuff that it can do. First of all, you can uh, control the brightness and then you can control the colors. You can set custom colors, but I'm a simple man and I just go with the basic colors and I'm gonna go with blue and I'm going to dial that down a little bit. Uh, but here's the real thing that I'm after is if you go to modes, you've got toggle. I don't know if you guys can see that. You've got toggle, momentary, and pulsed. And you can determine what each switch does. So right now for the light bar, I'm not going to mess around with the cranking one because it's only like 40 degrees out here. And I don't want to be... I don't want to be cranking this engine being this cold if I'm not actually trying to start it. So we'll play around with the light bar. So right now I've got the light bar set up as a toggle. So when you press the button, it turns it on and you can see the glow on the dashboard there that the light bar is going on. And then if you go to the main screen, you can also turn these on from the app. So you can operate the switch from the app, which is pretty cool. Uh, but if we go to modes, and if I take that light bar switch and I set it to momentary, then it changes it so that it's only active when I press the button. And that's what I'm after for the, uh, the starter, so that I can press it while I'm cranking, and then when it starts, I just let it go, and, you know, and it'll disengage. But then there's also this pulsed mode, which basically just makes it a strobe, which is kind of cool if you wanted to set up a strobe light or some special effects or something. So that's it for setting up the switch panel. I'm very happy with that because now my starter is going to be momentary, which is exactly what I need. So let me throw all the fiberglass back onto this and then let's see if we can do a little test drive.
right, guys, that's going to be it for this video. Now, this video, unfortunately, actually spanned over about four weeks. Originally, it was just going to be a little update with me updating the electronics on there. But then at the same time, I started working on the trailer and I started tearing that apart to put a second axle on that. So I was kind of doing that at the same time I was doing this. And then I got to the point where I was done with the electronics and I wanted to do that test drive and then I got hit with a snowstorm because we're in Colorado here. And then while I was waiting out that snowstorm, I just continued working on the trailer. Then I got hit with another snowstorm. <laughs> so at that point, I tore down ratchet a little bit more and I changed the brake, the parking brake um, valves that I had. I had them mounted up where the, it went up and down and I had the plugs there. Well, I took all that off and I mounted some, some just ball valves on the floor because a lot of people said that the soft pedal I was having was probably, maybe had something to do with those. So I mounted those down low and I think I'm pretty happy with those. I had, to, I had to drain down the brakes and I had to change all the piping and then I had to re-bleed everything so it was a lot of work. But it feels, it feels better than it did before. And those, uh, they actually work really well as parking brakes. You just put the brakes on a little bit and then you just turn both of those valves and then it seems to stay pretty good. So I did all that and then at the same time I was working on the trailer when I could. So. Today, I finally got a good enough break in the weather when I could, where I could take Ratchet out and drive him up and down the street a little bit. Real mellow. I'm not looking to irritate any of my neighbors. Ratchet's actually pretty loud when you start stepping on the throttle a little bit. And he's also not street legal at all. He's not insured. He's not going to be registered. He's going to be a track or an OHV park um, vehicle only. So I didn't want to I didn't want to push my limits or anything, so I just did a couple miles on some streets in the neighborhood. Real easy stuff. I promise you guys, after watching me play around with Mahler, and after watching me piddle with Ratchet on the street a little bit, you guys are probably starting to think I don't know how to beat on a vehicle. I promise you, the next video of me driving Ratchet should be with him at the off-road park. At that point, I'll be able to do whatever I want, and I promise you those videos of me driving him will be much more exciting. Anyways, that's it for this video, guys. I hope you guys like it. It's hopefully the last updates before I get him to the park and I can tear him loose. Before that, you should see a video coming of me putting the second axle on Bajaller, the trailer. Thanks for watching the video. I hope it's helping you guys with whatever you're working on, and I hope I see you on the next one. Take care.